Well, welcome again, viewers. This is Brian Need Three Topics Gamer here to share with you another episode of my Versus series during my final season. And this time, we will be venturing right back into the Resident Evil series and pitting these two expert soldiers against each other. As BSAA agent Chris Redfield will take on Jack Crouser to see who would win in a fight. Now, just like before, this and the remaining matchups that I have planned for the rest of the season will be broken down in this much shorter format. And when it comes to comparing these two, I'll be using Chris as he was during the events of Resident Evil 6 and Krauser as he was during the events of Resident Evil 4. Now, since not much information has been added on either of these characters over the last number of years, my breakdown information will be coming directly from the prime matchups that I've used involving both of these characters. So before I begin, if you do happen to enjoy this video by the end, please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to keep track of me and all my future content along with helping help grow the channel and increasing its performance. So with all of that out of the way, let's begin by breaking down and analyzing Chris Redfield first. Now, Chris Redfield was born in 1973 and was the older brother to Claire Redfield. Though not much is known about Chris's upbringing, what is known is that by the age of 17, Chris would join the United States Air Force, and for five years he would learn how to fly planes and helicopters, and it was also during this time that he would first meet and work alongside Barry Burton. He would also be trained to use a variety of different weapons, including knives and firearms, and he gained a respectable reputation for his marksmanship and hand-to-hand -hand combat. In 2005, Chris, along with his longtime friend Jill Valentine, would help establish the Bioterrorism Security Assessment Alliance, or BSAA for short, which was dedicated to stopping the creation of BOWs. Over the course of Chris's combative career, he's taken part in a series of different important events, which included the Arkeley Manson incident in 1996, rescuing his younger sister Claire Redfield from Albert Wesker from a base in Antarctica in 1998, destroying the last of Umbrella's research facilities with Jill Valentine in 2003, taking part in the Kujuju incident which allowed Chris to successfully kill Albert Wesker in 2009, and helping fight his way through a biohazard outbreak during the Lan Xiang incident in 2013. It's probably safe to say that when it comes to combat experience over a long combative career, Chris has the most impressive record above all other Resident Evil protagonists in the franchise. When it comes to Chris's combative physique, by 2013 Chris was a 40 year old human male and was still in extremely good shape. He possessed great strength, speed, durability, stamina, and reflexes, all developed thanks to extensive experience in multiple combat situations against BOW enemies. When it comes to his armament that he will be bringing into this fight, he will have a slightly modified version of his HNKG 36 assault rifle, a 909 9mm handgun, along with what appears to be an HK 717 military combat survival knife for close range. Chris also wears a TYR tactical Pico vest that not only provides extra protection, but due to its design gives Chris extra movement with his arms and carries extra pockets in front for magazines. When it comes to his martial arts skills and battle tactics, Chris's 20 years of experience would have allowed him to prepare for just about any possible combat situation. Chris has shown expert skills with adapting to the recoil of any weapon, which not only helps him to be able to shoot targets from extremely long distances, but allows him to quickly retarget multiple enemies in a short amount of time. Apart from his marksmanship, Chris was a highly trained unarmed combatant having trained in the use of CQC while he was in the Air Force, and over the course of his combative career was trained in a long list of unarmed combative forms, ranging from kickboxing, Muay Thai, Judo, Jiu Jitsu, and Chris has even been shown to have been trained in the use of the Filipino martial artist called Escarama. In battle, Chris's tactical approach seems to rely on using a heavy focus offense to control a battle situation and then using slight adjustments in as the battle progress. In battle, one thing that Chris does exceptionally well is pay attention to his opponent's techniques as he plays into Chris's willingness to adapt. Despite how effective Chris is in an offensive manner, he has been shown to be highly vulnerable to sneak attacks or stealth maneuvers, as he has been caught off guard or in some cases can be so focused on a singular objective that he loses his spatial awareness, and against some opponents, this factor alone can quickly lead to Chris being taken down. Jack Crosby was born in 1976 and over the course of his life would show a profound interest in being a soldier. He was an experienced United States Army soldier and mercenary and led many successful operations and was an overall first class soldier who took pride in his capabilities. Crosser's extensive military service and wealth of experience led him to become a Special Forces member of the U.S. SOLCOM unit. And in 2002, Crosser received an order to participate in a mission to South America to investigate the link between the Umbrella Corporation and the drug lord Javier Hidalgo. 
During the mission, Krauser would be partnered with an American government agent named Leon S. Kennedy, and while Krauser would be successful in completing his mission, he would unfortunately suffer an injury that would force him to retire. Having seen for himself the power of BOWs, this convinced Krauser to fake his own death and ally himself with Albert Wesker and go on an assignment to kidnap the President's daughter Ashley Graham for the cult leader Lord Sadler. During this assignment, Krauser would succeed in getting a sample of the Lost Plagas Parasite which enhanced his body and granted him a physical mutation that he could control, but he wouldn't have long to enjoy his newfound power as his old partner Leon S. Kennedy was assigned to rescue Ashley Graham, and after being defeated by Leon S. Kennedy, he would be finished off by Ada Wong, only to have his corpse be recovered by Albert Wesker to be used for his future experiments. By the time of his death in 2004, Jack Crosser was a 28-year-old human male standing exactly 6 feet tall and was a very muscular human. Prior to his allegiance to Albert Wesker, Crosser's early military training kept him in extremely good shape for combat. He possessed great stamina and endurance and had a very high tolerance for pain. When he injected himself with the Las Plagas Parasite Sample, all of his physical properties were greatly enhanced. Crosser was granted superhuman levels of speed and reflexes, and this was enhanced his speed and reflexes to such a high degree that he was able to dodge bullets and rockets. He could jump extremely long distances and his physical durability was beyond superhuman, and this guy could take a magnum to the face and keep on going as if he was not affected at all. The Las Plagas Parasite sample injected into his body also granted Krauser the ability to physically mutate his arm, granting him a gigantic blade arm which was not only able to completely cleave opponents into pieces, but also could be used as a metallical shield that could protect him from all projectiles from the knees up like a riot shield. He could also use his blade arm to execute a powerful forward charge capable of literally ripping people apart to the point where it looked like they had exploded. When it comes to Krauser's armament that he will be bringing into his fight, he carries a customized compound bow that has an effective killing range of about 60 yards and was fitted to fire both standard arrows along with arrows that carried a small explosive charge. He also carried a standard TMP, which was a fully automatic submachine gun, and his primary close range weapon was his personally designed hunter's knife which measured at about 18 inches with the blade itself measuring about 12 inches made of sharpened steel. Krauser also carried at least four flash grenades, which was mainly used to cover his retreat at close ranges. As a martial combatant and battle tactician, his extensive training on the field of experience allowed Krauser to be very flexible in a wide variety of skills with the use of firearms and heavy ordnance. Krauser's style of up-close combat was based more off of him taking advantage of his overwhelming strength and using sheer brute force to take down his opponent as quickly as possible, or giving him the opportunity to easily rely on his stealth tactics to catch an opponent off guard. Thanks to his training with Soulcom, though Krauser could be seen as a simple brute, he was actually quite clever with his tactical approaches, capable of fore planning and relying on stealth maneuvers and surprise attacks and non-direct approaches to wear down his opponents. Then once he had successfully worn down his opponents, he would pounce on them with overwhelming force. Now that we've established both combatants, it's now time to determine which one would emerge the winner. And that winner is going to be... Chris Redfield. Chris Redfield is easily going to walk away with the win here, and dare I say this will probably be one of the easiest fights for this version of Chris to win at this point in his life. The issue that Krauser is facing in this fight is that he is taking on someone who outclasses him in every department but one. The only advantage working in Krauser's favor is his physicality, and there's no question that Krauser is stronger, faster, more durable, possesses greater stamina, but this is something that Chris is used to dealing with at this stage in his life. This was a man who developed his other competitive traits to such a degree that he was able to respond to Wesker, and there's no question in my mind that physically, Wesker is either on par if not slightly ahead of Krauser in the physical department. And this Chris here that we are dealing with is certainly better than how he was when he took down Wesker. It's also worth noting that Chris at this point has far more combative experience than Krauser and carries a greater collection of armament and protection. And if Leon in 2004 could respond to everything Krauser is bringing to a fight, then Chris by 2013, who without question outclasses 2004 Leon in every way, would have an even easier time with Krauser. Krauser is at his strongest when he picks the time and place of a fight, but in an engagement like this that takes place on an even playing field, Krauser would have to go head to head, and that is simply not a fight he can win. If Krauser wants to engage Chris in a knife fight, Chris has him beat. If he switches to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat, Chris has him contained. If he wants to engage in a firefight, Chris has him beat there. And if all else fails and he pulls out his mutated arm, 
Chris would not be impressed as he has seen and dealt with far worse. The best chance for Crouch to win would literally be if he relies on his stealth to get the jump on Chris killing him instantly. The odds of this happening are extremely low given Chris's extensive experience. And once this fight starts, no matter what Crouch attempts to do against Chris, his defeat is pretty much guaranteed. I declare Chris Redfield the winner. Now that this Resident Evil theme versus series matchup is finished, I would love to hear your thoughts on my breakdown along with how you all believe this matchup will play out. Share your thoughts with me and everyone else in the comments down below, and please remember that this breakdown is just my own personal opinion, so don't feel too bad if Jack Crouser happens to be one of your favorite Resident Evil characters. Like always, thank you guys for watching, and now here's a quick preview of my next first series matchup due to be released next week, so please enjoy, and I'll catch you all next time.